a huge disparity between rich and poor, where 300 Americans have the same amount of wealth as the 85 billion, million poorest Americans, where there is a, an exploited and underserved underclass that are being continually ignored, where, where welfare is slashed while Cameron and Osborne go to court to defend the rights of bankers to continue receiving to their bonuses. They're calling for revolution. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm calling for change. I'm calling for genuine alternatives. I say when there is a genuine alternative, a genuine option, then vote for that. But until then, pfft, don't bother. Why pretend? Why be complicit in this ridiculous illusion? Because by the time somebody comes along, you might think it worth voting for. It may be too late. I don't think so, because the time is now. These movements are already occurring. It's happening everywhere. We're in a time where communication is instantaneous, and there are communities all over the world. The Occupy movement made a difference, in, even if only in that it introduced to the popular public lexicon the idea of the 1% versus the 99%. People, for the first time in a generation, are aware of massive corporate and economic exploitation. These things are not nonsense. And these subjects are not being addressed. They're, no one's doing anything about tax havens. No one's doing anything about their political affili affiliations and financial affiliations of the Conservative Party. So until people start addressing things that are actually real, mm. why wouldn't I be facetious? Why would I take it seriously? Why would I encourage a constituency of young people that are absolutely indifferent to vote? Why would we? Aren't you bored? Aren't you more bored than anyone? And you've been talking to them year after year, listening to their lies, their nonsense. Then it's this one gets in, then it's that one gets in. But the problem continues. Why are we going to continue to contribute to this facade? Being funny? You know, you want to be better than everybody else. You want to be the best, the funniest. You cannot define yourself in reference to other external coordinates. You must define yourself internally with your relationship with a higher entity. Think of yourself as a manifestation of some higher thing, some higher frequency. This is the visible realisation. And you know that because you can't see atoms, can you? And you certainly can't see the forces that hold atoms together. There, in the micro-quantum world, Richard, lie the answers to everything. We can't understand it without logical rationality minds but we feel it intuitively get yourself in alignment with that stuff and you beam like the sun we're living in the grand deception as you change your vibrational frequency everything changes how do we even know there are seven billion people on the planet for you to know that you would have to count each one but in this society we just accept so to be free, to become what you came here to be, you have to follow your calling because it's now or never. Many times we want to put ourselves into a box, my race, my religion. We have to let go of definitions. We have to step into the I am. Right now, people are beginning to see beyond the Maya, which is the illusion. Text and drive. I look around, pretty much 100% of people driving are texting. Yes. And they're killing, everybody's murdering each other with their cars. Yes. But people are willing to risk taking a life and ruining their own because they don't want to be alone for a second. The thing is, I, you need to build an ability to just be yourself and not be doing something. That's what the phones yes. are taking away. Yes. Is the ability to just sit there like this. That's being a person, right? Yes. No one can, they've got to, uh, you got to check. The distraction is out there to take you outside of your element. Anyway, I started to get that sad feeling and I was reaching for the phone and I said, you know what, don't. Just be sad. Just let the sadness just stand in the way of it and let it hit you like a truck. Just started to feel, oh my God. And I pulled over and I just cried like a bitch. I cried so much. And, I, and it was beautiful, it was like this beautiful, it was just this, sadness is poetic, you're, you're lucky to live sad moments. And then I had happy feelings, because because when you let yourself feel sad, yes. your body has like antibodies, it has happiness that comes. Right. I was grateful to feel sad, and then I met it with true, profound happiness. I remember I see you in that program where you look at your ancestors and you saw that while your grandmother who had to brass herself or got fucked over by the aristocrats who ran her gaff, you cried because you knew that it was unfair and unjust. And that was what was that a century ago? That's happening to people now. I just come from a woman who's being treated like that. I've just been talking to a woman today who's being treated like that.
So if, if we can engage that feeling, instead of some moment of lachrymose sentimentality trotted out on the TV for people to pour over emotional porn, if we can engage that feeling and change things, why wouldn't we? Why is that naive? Why is that not my right because I'm an actor? I mean, I, I've taken the right. I don't need the right from you. I don't need the right from anybody. I'm taking it. Do you see any hope? Remember that? Yeah, totally. There's going to be a revolution. It's totally going to happen. I think not, not only I, I ain't got a flicker of doubt. This is the end. This is time to wake up. I'm surprised you can be facetious when you're that angry about it. Yeah, I am angry. I am angry. Because for me, it's real. Because for me, it's not just some peripheral thing that I turn up once in a while to a church fate for. For me, this is what I come from. This is what I care about.